All right, team. Uh, listen, I wasn't going to make this video, but I think it's uh, really crucial because I've had an interesting conversation today with somebody who was struggling with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, and the topic of protein came up. And uh, not long ago, an article by Vox went absolutely viral on Twitter, and here's what it says. He says, Americans are obsessed with protein. They eat about twice as much of it as the federal government advises as if the federal government is someone to listen to when it comes to health. And 60% of US adults are trying to get even more of it into their diets. God forbid people are trying to improve their diet. Excessive protein consumption could be making us sick. How much protein should you actually eat per day? How, I'd like to understand how excessive protein consumption can be making us sick. Uh, but let's, let's go ahead and read their article of how much protein you should actually eat and see what it says. Americans are obsessing over protein and forgetting about fiber. Americans are oddly obsessed with protein, consuming, consuming around twice the daily amount recommended in the federal dietary guidelines. Guys, the federal dietary guidelines are complete dog shit. Uh, the last time the federal government got together and created something to do with diet, it was the freaking food pyramid. So let's not listen to them as the authority of anything really, but especially health. The National Academies of Science more nuanced guidelines break down the suggested protein intake by body weight, recommending 0.36 grams of protein per pound of weight every day. Pregnant and elderly people should consume more along with highly active individuals. For the average American man weighing just under 200 pounds, that's 72 grams of protein. For the average woman weighing just under 171 pounds, that's 61.5 grams of protein. American men exceed that recommendation by 31%, God forbid. According to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention survey data, women exceed it by about 12%. Public health authorities designed these recommendations with plenty of slack, meaning they're higher than what most people actually need, to ensure they don't become protein deficient. But despite exceeding the recommended intake, 60% of US adults are trying to get more of it into their diet. Um, so apparently 0 0.36 grams of protein per day is above what you would really need so that you don't become deficient. But if you're only eating that much protein per day, what else are you eating? Like, where are your calories actually coming from? Say you eat around 2,000 or 2,500 calories a day on average. Where do the rest of those calories come from? What are you consuming if you're not consuming healthy proteins and healthy whole foods? More than likely, you're eating shit food, uh, engineered processed foods by fast food companies that they want you to eat, uh, protein alternatives, nuts and seeds, grains, uh, foods that are just absolutely horrible for your overall health. Not that nuts and seeds are horrible for your overall health, but you get what I'm saying. When we start to create these Franken foods, these uh, food-like products that aren't exactly whole foods, you're not going to feel so good. So apparently, food companies have taken notice, adding protein to seemingly everything. Pasta, chips, ice cream, crackers, and more over the last decade. But this obsession could be making us sick. Excessive protein consumption, especially from cholesterol-rich animal-based foods, is correlated with increases of risk in cancer and heart disease. No, it is not. This doesn't just affect those following high-protein, keto, paleo, low-carb diets, which is about one in five Americans. It's a problem for most Americans, especially men. One small informal study in the UK even found that some men who want to reduce their meat consumption are embarrassed to order vegetarian me meals among male friends. First of all, it's one small informal study. So let's just note that. Excessive protein consumption is also wreaking havoc on the planet. Yeah, cool story. Globally, most people exceed minimal protein consumption recommendations, but Americans and Canadians take it to another level. Despite eating more protein than any other region, Americans and Canadians eat the least amount of plant-based proteins. Instead, they get it from animal meat, dairy, and eggs allegedly. The recommended intake that they've got here on their table is 50 grams of protein. 50 grams of protein, guys. Now, I've been treating patients with autoimmune and chronic health issues for about five years online now. We do quite a lot of testing. Every single time we get a patient in, we test microbiome, DNA, blood tests, hormone panels, all sorts of stuff, nutrient status. I have never actually scratched that. I've met one patient, one, who ate too much protein. 
And mind you, this person was extremely diligent with their diet. They were an athlete. They were a bodybuilder. They walked around at like 6% body fat and 100 kilos of muscle. He is the only person in the history of our clinic that ate too much protein. Everybody else could do with a little bit more. We see it in their blood work. We measure their mean cell volume, their B12 levels, their urea creatinine ratios. We see it in a clinical setting. People are protein deficient. They eat far too many carbohydrates. Their insulin and glucose control is, is out of whack. Uh, they put on weight. They hold on to belly fat. They don't have enough muscle. In fact, as they age, they lose muscle and their bone density sucks because they're not doing resistance training and they're not eating enough protein. And so what do you want them to eat? Please, Vox, tell me, if we're eating too much protein, what should we be eating? What's the alternative? Well, I'm sure they have a solution for us. Let's, let's find out. Uh, fiber. So apparently, we need more fiber, gut health, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, what else? What aspiring vegans should know about B12, iron, and more? Okay, so we went from eating too much protein to vegans. So we want you to, to be vegan. Apparently, it's easy to get adequate B12 from just a few pennies a day. Take a B12 in whatever form you'd like, pills, lozenges, or oral sprays, of which you can be purchased at your local pharmacy or grocery, and, and, and add things like nutritional yeast or B12 fortified foods such as breakfast cereal. So don't eat protein, don't eat whole food meats, don't eat animal-based products, super dangerous for you, but have fortified breakfast cereals, guys, just in case Kellogg's runs out of money. Another critical nutrient is iron. Yes, almost every female patient that we get in the clinic is iron and ferritin deficient. What do you need for that? Protein, animal-based protein. Let's have a look. So be vegan, up your fiber, be vegan, uh, don't eat animal-based protein, but essentially eat fortified foods, uh, nuts and seeds and lentils and soy products and dried fruit and oats and greens and quinoa. Do that instead, guys. Uh, do that instead because that's obviously going to be um, that's going to be great for you, as with everything else that the federal government has recommended when it comes to your health. It's uh, it's been amazing. Look how it's worked out already. Our kids are fat. Our adults are fat. Our toddlers are fat. Our newborns are fat. Everyone's sick. Everyone's unhealthy, especially in the U.S. And yet, let's keep listening to the federal government. Trust them with your food. Pretty soon, they're going to tell you not just what to eat, but how to eat it. Don't chew it. Drink it instead. They're going to control every single thing about you and your diet and your intake. Guys, listen to me. I mean this with sincerity. I'm not trying to mislead you. I don't get paid to do these videos. I just, I just want to tell you the truth. I had a call with a person today who said, I'm going to try a vegetarian diet. And I'm going to get my protein from nuts and vegetables and seeds. And this is a person who's been struggling with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, fatigue for decades. And I said, look, you just, nuts are not a source of protein. Neither are seeds. It is not going to help. In fact, the problem is likely that you don't eat enough protein. That's probably what the problem is. So you need to have more meat in your diet. But it's difficult when you have propaganda and articles like this coming out for a person like me, a nutritionist, who spent a lifetime studying this stuff, over a decade working in a clinical practice, doing a university degree, biochemistry, I've been an athlete myself, I've gone through my chronic health issues, and I'm, you know, half the time I don't get paid for my appointments, I have free discovery calls with people. And I give them advice, and they still don't listen because it's so difficult when you have to... Uh, Deal with this. When the world is telling you go vegan, when the world is telling you that you're eating too much protein, you're not. You're probably not eating enough. In fact, the recommended daily intake is about a gram per kilo of body weight. An average female should have around anywhere between 80 to 120 grams of protein a day. An average male should have around 100 to 150. The more activity you do, the higher the requirements. The more injuries you have, the more tr physical trauma you go through, surgery, pregnancy, the higher the requirements. If you're not eating protein, guys, you will eat shit calories. You will eat more processed foods. There are plenty of studies to show this. There was a study from the University of Sydney, I believe it was, that showed that protein starvation led to higher intake of calories overall. So if you don't eat enough protein, you will eat more calories overall, and you will put on weight, and you will be fat, 
and you will have metabolic issues and autoimmune issues and chronic inflammation. So please do yourself a favor, increase your protein, track it, download one of those apps and see how much you eat, reach, try to aim for a gram per kilo of body weight, okay? Give it a shot, I'm telling you, you will feel a heck of a lot better. Uh, otherwise, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, comment, send it to somebody who's considering going vegan, save them from themselves and save them from Vox and the propaganda that's out there. And also, if you want some one-on-one -on -one help, there is a link below. You can fill out a quick form. It takes about 60 seconds. You can book directly into my calendar and you and I will have a 30 minute Zoom call free of charge and we'll just see where you're at and whether we can even help you. Thanks guys. Catch you next time. Bye.